Okay, so we've spent a good chunk of time thinking about together the notion of a function, right? That's where you sort of have an input, you put something in, and then something else is spit out. But now I want to think about sort of the opposite question. Suppose that you put something in, the thing is spit out, and now you want to undo that process. Suppose you're given, you know, the spit, and you want to go backwards and find out what was the input that sort of spit that out. So how do you reverse that process? How do you go backwards? I mean, think about like, like a coding kind of thing, right? You take a message and somehow you code it, you know, using x squared, blah, 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 and you get something out, and now you want to decode it. You want to take the output and do the process in reverse, and then all of a sudden, boom, you'd have what the original x was. Well, that, in fact, is the idea and the philosophy behind finding inverse functions. So an inverse function, basically, is a function that undoes another function. So now, how do these things work and what do they look like? Well, basically, inverse functions sort of behave like this. Suppose I have a value, suppose I have a function f of x, and I have some point x. And so if I see where f of x sends it, it sends it to something, it's like a little machine, and it sends it to f of x. So I have now another number. So I put in like 5, it spits out something else. And now what I like is to build a new function, let me call it like g of x, which has the property that if I use this as the input and I map it with g, so now I'm going to use g, what would it look like? It would look like g of this thing, that's the input now. See, I'm inputting the output of the other machine. That should give me the original x back. So this may look sort of confusing notation, but think about it. I put in an input, x. It goes off and gives me f of x as output. Now I take that output and put it inside a new function, and it should spit out the original x. And if you notice, that's a composition of function. That's goff, right? It's g composed with f. So we're back to composition of functions. And I want that to be x. And similarly, I want f to be the untangling of g. So if I did this thing starting with g, so if I started with a point x up here and first did g to it, so I first sort of did the decoding process, and then I hit it with f, so then I put in f of, and then I put in the output, I'd still want to get back to where I started. So this should still be x. So again, I see now fog, f composed with g of x equals x. Well, this all sort of looks kind of complicated, and indeed it, it is complicated looking. But the important thing is, I just want to find a function that will undo another function. Let's try an example just to sort of get our feet wet and see sort of just the basic idea of what I'm talking about. Because sort of undoing a function sounds a little bit, you know, funky. So let's suppose I have a function f of x, and it equals 2x minus 3. OK. Now, what I want to do is I want to find a function that untangles that. So what would I do? Well, for example, let's just look at some examples here. So what would like f of 1 equal? f of 1, if I put in 1, would give me negative 1. f of, let's say, 3 would give me what? This would be 6 minus 3 would be 3, and so forth. So what I want is I want another function that has the property that if I input 3, it'll spit out the original 3. If I input minus 1, it'll spit out the original 1. For example, let's put some more points in. What if I put in like, you know, minus uh, 2? If I put in minus 2 here, I see minus 4 and 3 is minus 7. So I want this new function. When I input minus 7, it outputs minus 2. Do you see how it would untangle? Well, let's try this function. g of x equals x plus 3, all divided by 2. That's a different function. Let's see what happens if we input into here the output of here, just for fun. <laughs> You're like, this is fun. No, no, it is. It is. Come on, stop it. Don't be so pessimistic. If I put in a minus 1 here, I have a minus 1 plus 3. That gives me a 2. I divide by 2, and look what I get. I get 1, and that's what I started off with. That's pretty cool. Now, that is pretty cool. Okay. Let's try this one. Okay, So g of 3, our fantasy is that it should be, give us back the th original 3. Let's see. If I put in 3 here, 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2, so we get 3. What about this one? g of minus 7, is it possible that we actually get negative 2? If I put in minus 7 here, plus 3 gives me a minus 4 divided by 2 is, in fact, negative 2. 
This is really cool. This function seems to decode that function. Because if I take any output value and put it as input, I actually get back the original thing. Really cool. Now, can we see that sort of as a general idea? And the answer is, well, let's try it. So instead of putting in particular numbers, let's just actually plug the whole function in. So let's do that composition business. Let's look at fog. This is composition now. This means f composed with g. f of g of x. So what does that mean? It means wherever I see an x in the f function, I'm going to replace it by g, which is this whole function here. Let's plug this in wherever I see an x. So this would equal, I see 2, so I write a 2, times x. But now in place of x, I write all that stuff. So I write x plus 3 all over 2. So there's the x, and then minus 3. So all I'm doing is I'm evaluating f at g. That means wherever I see an x, I'm going to insert all of g right in there, and I get this. Well, notice the 2's cancel. So I just have x plus 3 minus 3. x plus 3 minus 3 equals, look, x. So I start with x, and these two functions sort of cancel each other out, and I'm end with x again. So whatever I start with, I get something. When I plug it into the other thing, I get back to what I started with. So you can see these two functions untangle each other. These are called inverse functions, inverse functions. Now, does every function have an inverse? The answer is, darn it, no. There are functions that don't have inverses. Let me give you an example. Uh, f of x equals x squared. The good, lovable, standard parabola. How could this thing not have an inverse? Well, let's think about it. Suppose I input 2, and that would, of course, spit out 4. Now what I need is some machine that will take the 4 and spit out 2. So maybe you're thinking, like, how about square root? Well, that wouldn't be a bad idea. How about the square root function? So maybe we should think that g of x equals the square root function. Because notice that g of 4 equals um, 2. Looks good. But let's try this. f of minus 2. If I put in minus 2 and square it, I still get 4. But look what happens. When I plug back the 4 again, I still get 2. So this is not giving me back the exact value I got before. And the problem is, because there are different values of x's here that lead to the same y value. So once I get the same y value, I can't go backwards. Because you see, if I start with a 2, that leads me to 4. But if I start with a negative 2, that leads me to 4. But if I start with 4, how can I go backwards? I don't know where to go. Do I go to 2? Do I go to negative 2? Do I go to 2? Do I go to negative 2? Both roads get back to 4. So which one did you have in your mind? I can't tell. So in fact, this function can't be undone. Because once you square something, you don't know exactly where you came from. You could have come from a positive number, or you could have come from the negative version of it. So some functions actually can't be untangled. And we'll take a look at why and how you can tell which functions can be untangled and which functions can't be untangled. This whole notion is the notion of finding the inverse function.